Um, so I'm just going to do a quick recap for those who missed last week and also just as a revision uh, for, um, for all of us. Um, so what, um, uh, what we went through last week was um, all of us struggle with sin. All of us struggle with uh, things, um, or habitual sin, habitual um, uh, negative emotions, um, uh, which we don't seem to be uh, able to get rid of. Some we have identified, some, uh, you know, God will reveal to us in future, but we've all gone down, or most of us have gone down that path where we see some sin in us or uh, some thing that is uh, an outflow of sin in us. And we don't seem to be changing. We don't seem to be, um, um, you know, um, able to affect uh, that change. Right. Um, so, um, and then we were looking at um, um, from two verses, uh, which is uh, in Colossians and in Galatians, uh, where it talked about um, what uh, the earthly um, uh, self was, what the uh, flesh was doing, uh, what the old man uh, in us was doing or does or is prone to do, which included, you know, this whole range of um, outward um, expressions of sin um, and thoughts and attitudes as well. Um, and then we, we went on um, um, to understand. Uh, so even in those two passages, it was talking about, um, you know, putting off the old self, putting on the new self, right? Um, it was talking about, um, um, uh, you know, uh, walking in the spirit, uh, and not walking in the flesh, right? All these were works of the flesh and all these were works of the spirit. Um, um, uh, so we, we kept um, um, still figuring out how do we do this? How do we put off the old self, right? Uh, it's been a struggle for a lot of us. It's there in scripture. It's mentioned very clearly. Put off the old self, walk in the spirit. Put on the new man uh, and do not feed the old man, right? Do not, uh, the old man does all these things. The works of the flesh is all these things. Um, and the works of the spirit is all these things. But it's still been very, very hard for us to do. Um, and many times we do um, things like just um, stopping doing something uh, or trying our level best not to be or do any of that, any of that sin, right? Um, the the average Christian generally talks about sin um, by talking about behavior, right? Uh, I did this, I went there, I did, um, you know, uh, I didn't uh, do this. And, um, um, uh, but why exactly do we uh, do all those things, right? Why do we steal? Why do we, um, you know, have evil thoughts or sexual immorality or theft or murder, or even when we uh, are in internal thoughts, you know, why do we covet, uh, you know, dream, fantasize about things, envy, jealousy, uh, and uh, why do we, why do we get irritated or, you know, um, 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 you know, about things around us and all that. And, and when we look at Mark chapter seven, verse 20 to 23, uh, it clearly says, um, what comes out of a person is what defiles him for from within out of the heart of man comes all these things, okay? Evil thoughts, sexual, and all these uh, different um, um, uh, different emotions and thoughts. But the, the root uh, of sin and the root of a lot of these things is deep-rooted uh, in issues that stem from the heart, okay? Uh, I hope it's clear to whoever hadn't reached, I mean, hadn't uh, attended last week. Um, I hope it's clear so far. Um, now, Mark is telling us that beneath the battle for, uh, you know, behavior is a more fundable battle of uh, the heart. Okay. The battle for the thoughts and the motives of the heart. Okay. Um, so uh, if you, um, yeah, and, and, all the ways that the Bible refers to the inner person, um, the um, you know mind, spirit, soul, um, everything that we do is shaped uh, by what our hearts desire. Okay, uh, Proverbs chapter twenty-seven verse nineteen says, "As water reflects a face, so a man's heart reflects the man." Um, so we come to the next point. So now, if it is the heart, I like to uh, take that analogy of the uh, tree. Uh, again, uh, so if it is the heart um, uh, and the heart is the root, 
um, we see that the fruits that we um, uh, that we pick up um, is um, essentially all these different things that we uh, looking at outwardly, right? Uh, sin that we look at outwardly, uh, emotions and thoughts that are negative, which we look at outwardly. And many of times we try to just pluck uh, a particular fruit um, in the hopes that it will go away, in the hopes that maybe the whole tree also will change. But essentially when we are changing behavior or trying to stop behavior or stop uh, doing um, um, anything, uh, what happens is that uh, we're just plucking the fruit, right? But deep down, if you look at even Luke chapter 6, verse 43 and 45, 43 to 45, um, it says the good person out of the good treasure of his heart produces good and the evil person out of the evil treasures produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks, right? Um, so if you, look at, if you look at that, it's saying that Merely doing this, plucking out all these uh, different behaviors, stopping doing a whole bunch of things is merely not enough. While it's good disciplines, while it's a good start, that's not the heart of the issue. It will always come back. It's a behavioral thing that you're plucking out. It will always come back because you're not addressing, you know, the root, right? So let's look at the root, which is the heart. What is the heart actually doing, right? All of our hearts were created to worship. Okay, all of our hearts were created to worship by God. And Ed Welch says, in our hearts, we are actively and always worshiping, trusting, desiring, following, loving, or serving something or somebody. Okay, um, what? Uh, while we are designed to worship and we are designed to worship God, our hearts are designed to worship God, all of us in some way or the other actively worship, trust, desire, follow, love, or serve something or somebody, okay? Um, when, uh, uh, when sin, sin comes, okay, when we don't actively worship, trust, desire, follow, love, God, Okay? When we desire something else, when we worship something else, when we love something else, uh, that outflow of that is how we end up sinning. right? So essentially, when you look at that, that is in its essence idolatry. right? Um, so then we, we went to define, okay, if, if uh, the root is the heart, and if my heart is made to worship, and I am sinning because I don't do all those things um, with respect to God and essentially I'm an Id idolater then I want to think okay what is an idol then yeah? it is anything more important to you than God anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God anything you seek to give you what only God can give you right so the moment you replace God with something else then all these things come into place, right? It's more important to you than God. Anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than God, anything you seek to give you, what only God can give you, okay? Uh, and a quick recap, uh, we can just check our thoughts, our desires, our imaginations, inclinations, our strong reactions uh, and our strong emotions um, to identify, okay, uh, what exactly is consuming me? What is my heart thinking about, right? What do you worry about the most? Uh, who, do, who or what do you look for comfort? What preoccupies your mind? Uh, how do you spend your money? Uh, you know, your most uncontrollable emotions would be uh, if you are, you know, unrighteously angry or irritated. Uh, is, there, is there something here too important uh, to me, you know, that's something I'm telling I have to have at all costs. And because that was violated or because I didn't get that, I end up, you know, being irritated or angry, right? I didn't achieve that goal or, or whatever. Uh, or if you're scared, it's, is it because it's something is threatened, which, you know, you, uh, which you think is a necessity, right? Uh, or if you're um, depressed or down, uh, is it because you failed in something, something that you've kept as the um, as a benchmark that you have to attain at all costs, right? Um, if you're overworking or driving yourself with to the ground with just activity around you, um, you know, do you feel you must uh, have this thing to be fulfilled and significant, right? 
can you go to the next tree slide so what we find uh, more often than not um, is that uh, when um, when uh, all these particular questions right uh, turn up um, things that we pursue or obsessively right things that we pursue more than uh, we pursue god um, and a lot of the times those idols come up as um, you know money or job or possessions or you know sex or um, um, it could be uh, an instrument it could be uh, a phone it could be anything like see that's where possessions come in right success all these things are things that come out when you when you ask those questions can we go to the next tree slide yeah thank you um, and so this a uh, particular uh, you can't see that there but this particular um 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 analogy right where you have all the sins as uh, or you know the the outward expression of that uh, of sin uh, as the fruit right and when you come down a little bit like the trunk area or whatever you find these surface titles right money job possession sex um success um, uh, anything that you you would think from those questionnaire that you answered um you find that all these are actually deep rooted in uh, four specific uh, categories uh, why you pursue money why you pursue a good job why you want to buy specific things why do you want uh, the pleasure of uh, you know sex or anything related to that fornication why do you want uh, um, you know something to uh, or excessively eat or whatever all that comes and boils down and categorize okay uh, into say control approval power um, and comfort okay i'll repeat that control approval power and comfort okay so these categories like i said these categories are just for us to understand for us to get an idea of okay how do we how 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 are we processing what is in my heart right Uh, these categories help us right uh, do i have a control issue do i am i uh, you know obsessively trying to control things around me do i have an approval issue am i doing things uh, you know for the approval of other people uh, do i have a power issue you know because i want status and um, you know power over other people am i doing certain things or do i have comfort for the comfort of my you know am i doing things um and um these are categories that will help us identify what is the uh, areas that we struggle with and help us uh, move forward these are not things that uh, you know set in stone that it's going to be only these you know kind of things so let's look at uh, just quickly uh, again the um, the definition of an idol it was anything more important to you than god anything that absorbs your heart and imagination more than god anything you seek to give you what only god can give from the questions right from the questions as well as from this tree structure right who or what is our idol right we exactly we find that always our idol is me it is my heart right it is for my for me to control it's for me to have power it's for my comfort it is you know for my for me to get approval from someone else right and so the root of even if you have these root idols the bottom line right is me i have become first right i have become first and we were we we were had a strong reminder of this is what satan did right god was first and then he said no it has to be about me he became first or he wanted to become first and that's when he fell right pride so i don't have victory over sin is because i am constantly feeding uh, my idols which is essentially me right um um so then we were going through um uh, you know the the things to lasting change was confession now that we uh, now that we understand or we are going to try to understand in the next 4 uh, to 5 weeks uh, where we are sinning and how we are sinning like uh, give me because i you know watch something right it's lord please forgive me that i turned to that for this so that i could satisfy myself 
right? And I'm confessing because now, and I'm grieving, and I'm confessing what I see. My heart has seen that, and I'm grieving and confessing, right? And once I confess, I can repent. Uh, a lasting uh, change or dramatical change in the direction of my heart and in the direction of my life, right? And the only way that we can do all this is through the gospel. So uh, this was a quick recap um, on uh, what uh, we went through. The next four weeks is, um, I, I believe is going to be a little more lighter. Uh, I guess, I don't know. But uh, let's quickly look at um, today's uh, topic, which is comfort idol. Um, so uh, what is a comfort idol, right? Um, for due to brevity of time, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm, it's this session is not going to be. I mean, this first part is not going to be as interactive. A comfort idol could be defined as, I am not content, okay, unless I have free access to a particular pleasure in my life, okay, or life has uh, only has meaning, okay. Uh, I only have worth if I have this kind of pleasure or experience or this particular quality of life. Okay. So while many of those things that we talk about in a comfort things, like I, I like to uh, have good food. I have like to watch a bit or I like to listen to music. While many of them are not bad in itself. Right. But when we turn to such things uh, as to give us, you know, hope, uh, when we're having a rough day or when, when we, you know, can't make sense of things, uh, they become idols in the heart and we worship them instead of God. Uh, we need to, uh, you know, it has to be in my life. If it's not there in my life, you know, I, I might lose it. Right. So, um, that as an idol and secondly, a particular pleasure or, um, uh, you know, you need a particular quality of life and that's what you pursue. Okay. Um, let me uh, read off a couple of things, um, uh, which is comfort lets you slack off when you want, tune out when you think you deserve it, and be selfish even when you know you are called to give. When you worship comfort, you don't have to give until it hurts. You don't have to love unconditionally. And you can do whatever you like with whatever you believe is your time. Right? Um, and the devil also spreads his lie that we deserve to be comfortable, right? Uh, and that we can only be happy if we have, you know, uh, some sense of security in uh, a comfortable life, or um, we can only be happy if we have free access to all these different pleasures. So if you look at uh, 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 some people say that, you know, this is why things like Netflix and uh, Amazon and all thrives because, you know, people's need to, um, you know, um, um, uh, be happy because they have free access to, you know, watch or buy or whatever it is, right? Um, uh, this is also because, you know, pornography and, uh, you know, human trafficking and all these things exist and flourishes because of everybody's need to satisfy their desires and their pleasures. And that becomes ultimate, right? Um, the other thing is some elements that we can see when we have you know, a comfort idol, um, you know, we want, we obsessively want privacy. Uh, we want everyone to <laughs> leave us alone. Uh, we hate stress. Uh, you know, uh, we'll avoid it at all costs. So we, we might not uh, take up things. We will not, we just want to be left alone. Um, we prioritize our freedom, our time, our space more than anything else. Um, we may avoid commitment. Uh, and things like that. So these were just um, uh, these were just a, just it's not exactly a definition, but just for us to understand uh, where we are uh, going with, right? Lidge, as long as there is an adequate layer of insulation, right? Why? Simply because there is hard work in relationships, and you and I would want to avoid that if we have the comfort uh, idolatry in uh, Harding. I mean, very strongly in us. So what are we avoiding? We are avoiding hard work, inconvenience, and responsibilities. This will be the core three main things that we will try to avoid that will reveal to us whether we have comfort as an issue. Right now, I just want us to, I want to remind us, comfort is not a bad thing, but it makes a very terrible God. And that's important to understand, all right? So now let's go to the antidote, this, this kind of, just one question as you yeah. go into the antidote. 
yeah. you know one thing that came up in our group is uh, um god designed rest yeah okay um and um it, that, don't we at least need to get some 20 percent comfort or uh, you know you know god is his interest he is there in the scripture so at yeah. least something i should be getting out of it right okay absolutely I, absolutely we must get rest uh, we must get renewed uh, and that is important and 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 that's why he is saying it's not that you do this one off at a time and then say oh you got a problem with with, with the idol of comfort you might not have that problem you're absolutely right there yeah yeah so just want to make that clarity you you can go on vacations you can go stay in resorts if you want to but if that's your idol and therefore you know even in line with today's message right it's very important that we pick up those so how do we respond if you have the idol of comfort all right i'm not going to look at the screen Uh, and what i'm going to do is the next 15 minutes just going to cover some of the foundations and the foundations are very important for us to understand that scripture warns us number one that life is far from being a resort in fact life is a war and i and i want us to be reminded of this that life is really hard it's not easy to go through some of the stuff because it is a fallen world you know our sinful nature it doesn't want to look towards god and when we have those rough days even painful trials and trials and temptations all that i want to do is i want to do it my own way and i just want to avoid many things you know our sinful flesh it wants to run to quick and seemingly right uh, stuff which 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 we call right but it is but it actually is only temporary right and so the world offers us a quick fix and it only leaves us coming back for more comfort so that's point number 1 uh, that scripture warns that life is far from being a resort i am reminded of this uh, of this uh, uh, kind of saying some, someone had had told this you know we think life is like 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 we are on a mediterranean cruise and in this cruise there's everything going around let's have your you know all the stuff around that whereas the contrast for us as we see life is life is a war it's and we must think of it this as a battleship a battleship where many people need to be rescued and brought to jesus christ and let them experience freedom and liberty so remember that scripture warns us this life is far from being a resort life is a war there is no entitlement for this number 2 uh, every pleasure on earth is vanity and nothing on this earth truly satisfies every pleasure on earth now here out from solomon the wisest man in history and he comes to a conclusion and that's revealed in ecclesiastes chapter 2 verses 1 to 11 and after doing all that he wanted to do all that his mind wanted to do he says this one two words i think he says all vanity that's interesting a guy who has experienced everything right see you see every joy you and i experience in this life always has a bottom to it it is not bottomless right it only has so much capacity to satisfy your heart and thrill your life you see there can never be enough entertainment enough music enough netflix enough instagram enough twitter or enough lazing around nothing can give what your heart really wants your heart is longing for something it is designed for something we feel that you know people who have the the the, the idol of comfort we feel that we can somehow escape all these realities and what we are, what are we escaping from we are escaping from responsibility we are escaping from pressure we are escaping from even emptiness right and the hard work and you know what we want to do is just lay there you know just as job and reminded us would we do anything that would step out and 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 help someone when it is inconvenient right and that's something that we want to think about and 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 if you are escaping from this what are we escaping to we are escaping to ease and comfort and that becomes our idol and that's something other than god so all of these my dear brothers and sisters these are all self salvation attempts all these paths are just empty idols and an, and an attempt to save ourselves from any of these trying to avoid pain saving ourselves from suffering saving ourselves from boredom and the and the weight of responsibility and pressure they that ain't going to help it's never it's never going to deliver 
because idols for a Christian are never meant to fulfill any of the core heart needs. And I like this uh, statement. Uh, it's, it says like this, the depth and duration of your joy depends on the depth and duration of the object you are looking to for that joy. I'll repeat that. The depth and duration of your joy depends on the depth and duration of the object you are looking to for that joy. So that's something uh, very important. Now we will move on to, you know, since we, if, if you have discovered that, you know, during the questionnaire, you have kind of said, hmm, I might have the comfort idol. It looks like I've answered majority of the questions, like it's a, it's a resounding yes, right? Then I think, uh, and, uh, you know, we need to, uh, and, and, and I know if you have actually come across this, you will say, give me those five steps right now to overcome all of this comfort idol remedy. And I would always say this, whenever we ask for 10 steps or five step program and 12 step programs to turn around our issues, those I call them as topical remedies and topical means you apply it on the surface. Now don't mishear me. There are, uh, you know, there's a place for that. There are necessary things that we must do, but they never get to the heart issue. And so I just want to begin at the core and I would, I, I, I bracketed it as internal and I would think of this as, you know, from a from medication or, or from, a, from a medicine perspective, we know internal medicine and then we know topical medicine, right? So that, that's why I've, I've kind of labeled it. And internally, our approach to lasting change, okay? I want us to compare this. By default, whenever we are confronted with something that, and, and that we are upset about us, all the approach that we take is generally the world's approach. And the world approach says this, do, be, no. So I'm going to repeat that. The world approach and what we generally follow, and that's also because we ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it says do, be, no. And what does that mean? It says you do good, you do good deeds, so you can be a good person, and in that process somehow know God. And that's our approach generally we take. You do good deeds, so you can be a good person, and somehow in that process, you know God. In this process, what, what, what we are doing is we are really working against the Lord by trying to do stuff in our own strength. And that's exactly why I'm not going to give you five steps. I always want to go back to the core. And we've got to look at the biblical approach. The biblical approach to this is the exact reverse of what the world has taught us or what has been internalized because of uh, eating of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The exact reverse thing is no, be, do. And so if you guys want to remember that, scooby dooby do, no be do, no be do. Just so, so think of that. No be do, where are you, right? And that's important. The first thing is we need to know. And what do we need to know? We need to grasp who God is and what he has done. That's number one. Number two, once you know who God is and what he has done, once we kind of understand that, we see who we are in him and who he is to us and for us. And in fact, that means I recognize my new identity. I was like this, but now my new identity is I am completely found in Jesus Christ. I'm adopted. I am awesome. I am like so precious to him. That's your new identity. It's no longer the old one. And finally, once you recognize your identity, we do. We live out of the reality of this new identity. You know, in other words, I like how somebody had said this, and this is very important for us. You are not what you do. You do what you are. And if that's very mind confusing, I'll repeat that again. You are not what you do. You do what you are. It's not like, you know, hey, so introduce yourself. And people say, yeah, I work with emphasis. And, you know, somewhere we kind of think that it's about what I do that gives me value. That's the world approach. But here is the beauty of it. When you know God and what he has done for you, live out of that identity. Every doing, every good work flows out of Jesus Christ living through you. And that's important to remember. Now, what I want to do is I also want to look at uh, Jesus, our prime example. And so, Joby, can I ask you to read uh, Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8? Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8.
जो भी आई या 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 सो इफ देयर इज एनी एनकरेजमेंट इन क्राइस्ट एनी कंफर्ट फ्रॉम लव एनी पार्टिसिपेशन इन द स्पिरिट एनी अफेक्शन एंड सिंपैथी complete my joy by being of the same mind having the same love being in full accord and a one mind do nothing from rivalry or conceit but in humility count others more significant than yourselves let each of you look not only to his own interest but also to the interest of others yeah just pause there uh, uh, for yeah. a moment see paul is writing this to uh, probably a, you know a, 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 a group of people who were divided in heart and there were a lot of things that were inconvenient for them they did not want to do relationships well you see it is never comfortable to do relationships it is always hard work and that's why we want to look at paul as he saying this is if you have received any comfort from jesus pass that comfort on to others by having fellowship with people you know if express that tenderness and compassion instead of being angry with people that's what he's inviting us to paul is commanding us to saying if you have found this in jesus and it's actually it's a first class condition the if there is a first class condition so it actually translates better as since you have encouragement from from being united with christ very important to do that and as he lays that down now he is going to cover about jesus because jesus is our prime example and model right so go ahead uh, jobi have this mind among you yourselves which is yours in christ jesus who though he was in the form of god did not count equality with god a thing to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross even death on a cross now look at this look at this model jesus christ stepped out of heaven okay this heaven i mean i mean in some imagination if we can with sanctified imagination uh, you know you would look at that this is a place of awesomeness right the place of comfort the place where man this is his home and in his home he you know he had all the angels worshiping him he had everything at his beck and call and this is his place and can can you imagine that that he left his comfortable zone he put on humanity right he walked away from the eternal peace in one sense that he was enjoying to walk towards a cross so that we could be ready you you know i i don't know about you but i see that jesus needed to step out of his comfort zone so badly i needed it so badly that he had to step it out and if he chose to say no father this is not my business i mean anyway why should i leave all of this stuff right i mean this is awesome you know but you know what in the in the sovereignty and the wisdom of god there was no other way except for jesus to leave his comfort zone get inconvenienced in every way where eternity is limited to humanity in a baby form that's 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 just so mind blowing to think about it but there is no other way look to jesus get out of the comfort zones number 2 i would say that you need to believe in the truth that god is good you know one that's one of the prime remedies for the idol of comfort often when we talk about god being good we are saying that he's morally excellent he does no evil he always does right i mean he's good but the idea of goodness also flows out from the idea of generosity is the idea of grace and because he gives he is also completely satisfying see god is good and because he is the author of satisfaction in every way when we say that he is good we are actually saying he is completely satisfied we are saying that comfort lasting comfort only comes in and through him so here is the tag line that i want us to remember when you think about god is good it is god is good so we don't have to look elsewhere god is good so we don't have to look elsewhere now i'll move on to the next one which is so we we have, we have covered the core the core is jesus is the answer in everything and if we don't find our comfort in jesus who inconvenienced himself stepped out of his comfort zone to rescue people like us there is no hope for us and that's important for us to begin that god is good he loves you he's he wants to make your life as awesome as it needs to be and we are missing out on adventures that he is giving us simply because we want to say no stress no demands don't touch me right now right so that's the core now let's go to the 
topical part or the external part these are things that we must do and i will want to bring, introduce the word rhythm and what's a rhythm right you, you see a rhythm is something called a pattern right you have a pattern right and what have all the sins and idols done to us it has whacked us out of a rhythm and so we must get the rhythms back in order and so rhythms are probably a a more it, it's kind of a different word for nothing but spiritual disciplines some of us don't like the word spiritual disciplines but you know maybe an alternate word if you don't like the word discipline is spiritual rhythm but they are essentially the same and we need to bring a spiritual rhythm that will help us smash the idol of comfort and the spiritual rhythm for smashing the idol of comfort is fasting i don't know how many of you have done fasting but in summary fasting is simply going without food to focus on god so what we do is we abstain from food for a time to focus on prayer you know it's meant to remind us where our true nourishment comes from isn't it fasting reminds us where true pleasure is also found do you remember the time when jesus was uh, jesus fasted for 40 days and at the end of the fasting he was so fully nourished by god in one sense by his father that he could say no to the temptations legit requirements and needs of his life when he was hungry and all of that he could say no using scriptures and that's why that's because he was so full that he was so full that the temptation did not look like yeah that's not even a temptation because he was so full of the father he had a legitimate need by the way he needed food by the way and all of that stuff but he said no yes that's going to be provided by my father but i will not take any illegitimate means to get and 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 experience um, uh, that response right fasting is very is, is an important part to overcome for those who you, of those of us who have the comfort idol um, now a theology named cornelius plantinga okay cornelius plantinga i think uh, he's an american theologian and he, and he reminds of the dangers of gluttony and the benefits of fasting this is what he says self indulgence is the enemy of gratitude and self discipline usually its friend and generator it's a friend and generator of gratitude that is why gluttony is a deadly sin the early desert fathers believed that a person's appetite appetites are linked linked to their character okay full stomachs and jaded palates take the edge from our hunger and our thirst for righteousness and that's what self indulgence does right they spoil the appetite for god and so don't limit fasting to food itself right you can extend fasting to other areas like go on a buying fast if if your alternate for you know being stress free uh, is to buy things on on amazon during the you know deal sales and all of that don't buy anything for a month make a decision i will not buy anything for a month uh, uh, you know maybe you can avoid the starbucks coffee that you love to go to i i know in the corona world we don't do that but you know things that are very dear to you this is your you know under pressure of pain this is where you run to if you see that withdraw it for a while you can always also go on a media fast uh, i i i exercise media fast <laughs> quite frequently um Uh, you know you can probably stay away for two weeks from netflix or instagram or prime video or hotstar whatever is that one which is holding you down you can think of all that and this is the fundamental right give up your regular comforts periodically to remember our comfort is from him abstain from things that are good so as to remember how good he is right so that's the conclusion right so i i, I want to just conclude by this right now if if you are asking for the four step process here is the four step process and i am calling this back to what sajin also reminded us you see the first step is always confession now i want to tell tell us this right you cannot confess what you don't know that you have a problem with right i mean if i have to give you this phone first the phone has to be in my hand and then i can give you the phone i need to know what is there i need to know and the part of the reason why we are doing these sessions is to just give you some verbiage and language for you to know wow i didn't know that i was eating up a lot simply because you know that is my comfort food i wanted to just break free from my stress 
now you're getting aware and that awareness is important because only once you're aware you can let it go and that's the first part you need to confess your sin you need to confess saying lord i just want to be honest i'm a comfort worshiper that's my struggle and i do not know how to break free from this that's important to first first begin and the second step is repent right repent is turn to the lord jesus and repent is simply meaning you turn confession means agree who brings the confession by the way once the holy spirit reminds to you specifically like you're running to this because of this confession is just agreement right in malayalam you say a to parayo you know what do you a to parayo fine you a to parayo fine exactly what the spirit reveals to you reveals the spirit reveals to you this is a specific area that you need to address it's very specific it's not very general and you will get to know that confess your sin turn to the lord jesus he take a u turn and he is the one who gives us lasting comfort in him you will be satisfied okay we can talk about some of those practical steps offline in some conversations the third step is trust and that's a part of faith trust that he is good i mean he did not withhold his son for you why would he withhold the rest of the things for you he wants the best for you you know i love what david puts in psalm 1611 in your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures for ever more do you see that it's full joy it's for ever joy and it's only found in the lord alone we got to trust him i mean you know he doesn't withhold anything from those who walk uprightly i mean that's 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 who god is it is his character it is it is in his innate in innate character to bestow goodness even on the most wicked and evil people why wouldn't he do that for us as his children he would do that and that's something that we want to constantly remind you trust that god is good and the fourth step and the final step is that practice practice the spiritual rhythm of fasting practice the spiritual rhythm of fasting right so we covered all of this um yeah I, and i hope this was in some sense useful but i know that you know some of you will as you as you struggle and wrestle with those questions in the questionnaire it's not that you might have this problem but for those of you have you know and you have answered more yeses than noes then you probably just need to just take it to the lord and uh, we will be happy to just have you know if to be a sounding board have those conversations you'll be really happy to kind of do that and we'll we'll we'll, we'll kind of you know hash it out and just see where the lord is leading us yeah but if you have any questions and we we barely touched the surface of it right saj i mean yeah. this is uh, not even uh, one by fourth of what we should have been covering but you know we are very conscious of the fact that it's a one hour session but if you have any questions anything that you want to shoot feel free yeah saj you want to just add on anything and the others also if there's anything to add on also please feel free yeah i'm um, nothing to add on as such but um yeah i, I think um, it was in the questions that um, just gives us an exposure like you said uh, so just encouraging everyone just to go through those uh, but just to go through those and um, um, you know ask those hard questions to ourselves as well um and and um, and and reach out to any of us um to if also if you think there's something wrong that uh, was said be like the berians um and and then we can always discuss that as well people have probably attended this kind of session before is there anything that you guys want to share uh, by the way we all have some form of idol somewhere here and there okay so don't assume that uh, we are all uh, free in one sense it's just that we are aware now uh, and that's important for us to yeah uh, uh, some of uh, some of you have uh, see we've done this uh, i think way back in 2016 15 uh, christ college study maybe uh, wednesday study maybe uh, and uh, so, so people have gone through this before um, also could chip in something that they learned over the years and why it was useful that would be really helpful to the others um i just want to share something about what lijo was talking about fellowship right um i think um when we are come when we're seeking comfort Uh, getting out of our comfort zone um see, we we are asked to fellowship it's a command given to us and in my initial days um of knowing the lord i think it was easier for me to fellowship with people who are not in the lord um i um and i convinced myself that hey i'm fellowshipping i'm still meeting people you know you may be meeting people but these are people who you 
who may comply with your comforts or may not uh, they may not encourage it but they may not at least call you out for it right but when you're in fellowship with believers those things come out whether it's the holy spirit convicting you or whether it's a brother or a sister calling it out for you it is being called out and it's not a comfortable place for um, us to want to be at so you may try and evade that kind of fellowship but you might convince yourself saying oh but i'm fellowshipping with i'm not um, isolating myself i'm meeting people i have a great friend in office um i have uh, people um, you know i'm i'm going for movies with my friends uh, i'm doing a lot of things but that is still um in a comfort zone um, I, i don't know this is something that i was able to recognize so if there's anyone here that it might benefit where you know you think that you're not isolating yourself that you're out of your comfort zone that you are convincing yourself i'd want to uh, you know uh, kind of urge you all to kind of do that self introspection and see if you're finding comfort even in fellowship um, that may not be healthy mm. thanks you too yeah um, i just wanted to uh, share um that um, i think the first time when i did this was in the wednesday self group and it was so uncomfortable <laughs> i'm still really uncomfortable um and that itself shows me how much of an ideal comfort is um and there's always uh, that tendency for your heart to get really hard at least this is something that i saw uh like you don't really want to accept that that this is something that you have and your in my immediate response was to just ignore it um i think i can go on for a little longer and not have to deal with it because it's really difficult to see uh, that all the things you've been doing and taking comfort in are actually really bad for you but you know that they feel good so that's why you want to keep doing it um and i think the like it, when i first heard this um i don't i didn't respond to it well at all i'm still not responding to it well um but uh, and i really ran away from it um and uh, but the but the lord is really good very gracious uh, he gives us chances over and over again and that's what i saw uh, i think the first time i heard it i don't think i took away much because my heart was really hard uh, and i and i would and i would not want to listen to the spirit whenever he was convicting me and uh, there's a there's that temptation to do that even now um but just remembering uh, how gracious he has been uh, in giving me so many chances to learn these things over and over again even though i wasn't faithful the first time to understand that or or to take steps uh, like confessing or repenting or you know or having faith in him that he is good uh he still brought it out he still did the work uh and that's when i realized um you know initially when i heard it i was like no way i can't do this this is not happening um but then I, he was so gracious and he took his time with me and he allowed me to go through uh my own way uh for a while and then he showed me his way and how much better it was and um and i and i really saw him working uh, personally for me uh and it and and i would kind of measure, try and measure myself up like okay everybody else is getting it and they are able to uh, identify these things and work on it and i wasn't able to because it was just that hard because i've lived in the idol of comfort for years and um like worship the idol of comfort for years and now it's it's not easy uh but he was gracious he and and he really showed himself to be good uh, and it was very difficult it still is very difficult um but um but he did the work and i didn't have to beat myself up like i had been doing for so long um i just needed to reach out and be honest and and even that was not something i could manufacture um it's this is this is not me i don't do things like this i don't talk about my sins out in the open i don't like doing that but uh, but the spirit does the work and that gave me so much of confidence to um to know that i don't have to manufacture anything Uh, he's the one who does it and he's the one who brings uh, my salvation experience to completion thanks and thanks andrew for sharing that um, i think it uh, really helps us understand uh, the struggles that we all actually go through 
um while we might look uh, hunky dory uh, on on the surface uh, but we all struggle with uh, especially deep rooted sin we which we don't want to uh, accept um, uh, from from that that you know we struggle with it uh, but yeah thank you so much for for sharing that as well so i just want to add you know that uh, sometimes we feel that comfort is our right okay uh, i've earned it you know i've worked hard uh, like how solomon says you know i've done all this stuff meaning i have earned it i had singers i had poets i had many things and i've done all of this and at the end as liju was sharing he says it's vanity you know i've earned it i've experienced all of it and why did god give him why did the lord allow him to have that is to know god better but he experienced all of that and he comes to realize is all vanity is he saying vanity vanity meaning everything is vanity in fact he says and uh, you know sometimes we think it's our right you know um and also just want to encourage all of us as we go through this 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 idol of comfort all seasons of our life okay singleness to uh, to being married and you know all seasons of our life we can go and just another third thing is actually this this thing is a uh, you know it is a, a self salvation attempt now let me try to rescue myself so i open the trap door you know that you know the famous five books where you know in that in that room in that house there is a trap door no one knows and there's a pulley okay the door opens we get in we go down there okay want to actually you know just rescue us out of the suffering boredom i don't want anyone from church calling me up i just need to be set aside you know and it's in fact looking at self salvation you know it's an attempt to self rescue us and it won't work it won't work it can lead us to boredom um i know that it can lead us to depression it can lead us to various kinds of things because we cannot rescue ourselves we cannot rescue ourselves and that's the beauty of the gospel as sergeant liju was sharing what a what a you know we can come to god you know and he gives us through the gospel the ability to smash that and and as you know as uh, sandhu you saying that he accepts us back he accepts us back what a you know what a what a savior we have and uh, you know just that we you know it's a conditioning of our mind and of our hearts to acknowledge it but what do we do with it is also what matters even i'm saying this that that you know even i'm convicted even i was when when we were preparing on this about the idols that i do have and what do i need to do about it knowledge is good you know oh yeah you know 25 questions you know i think everything is yes but what what is what does god want us to do um because we can never rescue ourselves or we just wanted to add that into uh, it's such is that i confess that um i never knew for the longest time um uh, the gospel always was like i mentioned in the last time was always an entry and exit for me so entry because i got salvation exit that i'm going to be uh you know with him uh but the efficacy and the presentness and the nowness of the gospel and that we can only live our lives um you know because of the gospel and what christ is doing every day in our lives and partnering with him when i learned that okay now it makes a little i mean it makes sense to me right uh before that it was like okay i have this and i have this those is terms that i learned in church and um so that was the game changer for me right Uh, it is the gospel uh, and what christ has done and the the position that he has placed you in and the the power that he has given you for that everyday change right you're not doing it on your own you're asking him to you know uh, yeah just yeah want to add that anyone else <clears throat> wants to add on yeah so this uh, topic the study has been like taught to us from like 2015 itself in the christ girl study in the wednesday cell group and then again i think we did one in the uh, sing study right no is no i don't know i don't know anyway first time. okay anyway but like i feel like i've learned this so much but i can never learn it enough because it's such a real thing it's like a daily thing so um one thing that i uh, did learn 
in my personal life from this uh, idol of comfort is that when you try to work on the issue right of removing the things that are comfortable the, the, there is a danger of thinking that oh i've gotten rid of all these things you know now i'm like really like a good christian i'm like so that self righteousness come can come in you know like oh i've gotten rid of like netflix and like the music and all no so now i'm like in a higher level you know <laughs> that that danger is very much there and that's also like so the so the antidote to that uh, was that it that will not last it will not last you will immediately go back to your old ways the antidote is when you empty out your heart and you fill it up with the greatest comfort that you can have in this life that is jesus you know um and i've personally been experiencing that finally after like so long of try if of trying and failing and trying and failing and like this lesson had we, we've been taught this lesson so many times but you know only now is that i'm i'm able to like realize that you know you replace the things that you think are good with the greatest good that is jesus and that looks like you know maybe it looks like for you it looks different for me it looks different but uh, that that's up to each individual to decide but yeah so just wanted to bring out this point about the danger of self righteousness in the process of trying to rid of comfort yeah 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 um does anybody want to um share anything else or ask anything else i just want to also say that this will be always a life uh, long process um so don't beat yourself up all of us the awareness is important and then we want to uh, confess and admit that remember um, especially for the people with idol of comfort you are generally by characteristic you will stay away from people and uh, we are not uh, we are not designed to stay away uh, it it basically works against us so it is not comfortable to actually stay away so at some point right we need authentic community of, of course we can game it by doing the high buy kind of relationship community that that generally doesn't work uh, where you what what people uh, with, with the struggle need more authentic community who will tell stuff in a nice way and sometimes in a care fronting way confronting way whatever you want to call it and uh, that will begin to uh, change things so uh, be open be available and i think uh, that should be good but uh, any questions that come to the mind about the question especially please shoot it back to us we'll be happy to uh, talk through that and and and, and help you guys out thanks Thank you.